and finding out about this on a Friday, right? So the people who are of noble, and this is prior to the time, this is way back before the time of Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam. And they had this festival, so they would go out and enjoy it and worship other things, maybe fire, things of this nature, light the fire and everything. You get the idea. They were having a party. But some of the younger kids, some of the younger ones, teenagers, they started having bad feelings about what was going on. So one after the other, they started going up, drawing away from the crowd. So they started going up, kind of like just sitting away from the crowd, one after the other. And they did not know each other, but they started moving from the crowd one after another, one after another, at least seven of them. So when they all sat together, then they could hear each other saying that we know God did not create us to do this. You understand? Yeah. So they decided to change their ways and they decided to start worshiping God. You understand? Yeah. But then they were discovered. They were figured out. So the king called them. He said, we got to talk. We understand that you all do not worship our gods. You have a different god now. And they said, yes, we all believe in one god and we worship only one god. So he said to them, it's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. So he stripped them of their noble statuses. And then he told them that they had to rethink it and come back again. Maybe, you know, they will get their statuses back, but they had to go rethink this, not to come back without returning to the way of the religion, our religion. You know, to force them back into it, right? So they decided to flee. They decided to run away. These youngsters, with their dog, they ran away and they got into a cave. And when they ran into, and when they got into the cave, then they supplicated to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And when they supplicated to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala made them go to sleep. And when He made them go to sleep. He made their dog go to sleep. They also had a dog. He made the dog go to sleep too. And then he made them and sealed them from the king and everybody who were looking for them. He made sure that they would not be able to find them. And they slept. And they slept. And they slept. And he says he allowed them to sleep with their eyes open. He allowed them to twist and turn on the earth. And he said that he allowed them to keep their eyes open. He said, because you know if the eyes are closed, then it's not easy to reserve the body. The body starts to go bad. No oxygen flowing properly, eyes. He made them sleep with their eyes open and he made them twist and turn on the earth. Otherwise, the earth would start to eat up at them. So he made them twist and turn on the earth. And he made the dog sleep right in the front. The door entrance as it was going to protect. But for sure, the angels were outside guarding them because they were not going to be inside with the dog. And he made them sleep for you know how many years? 20? No. Like, I don't know. 309 years. That's a long time. What do you think happened when they woke up? They 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved them. Yes, they're still young. How about everything outside? What do you think would be here after 309 years? Like a lot of technology or something. <laughs> But there won't be like... There won't be... I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? A technologist or something? Uh, tech <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of tech... No, not that technology. Technology major? Mm. Uh, well, 309 years, and so when they woke up, they decided to go and find out what was going on outside. So they asked the one who was youngest to go and buy something with the money that they had, the currency that they had. But 309 years is a long time. So this boy goes out. Well, before that, Allah wants them to dispute on how long they have slept. So they start to dispute. Some are saying half a day, some are saying a day. We've only been here a day. Yawman or ba'da yawm. Some saying one day to two days. <laughs> And you know, they're saying this because when they went in, you know what time they went in to this hideout of the day? The morning? Yes, very good. And you know what time they woke up? In the morning. No, in the evening. Oh. <laughs> oh, then they thought they didn't sleep for a day. So oh, they're saying we slept for a day, maybe two days. And then someone said, Allah knows how long you've slept for. But now we're going to send the younger one to go and fetch the timing and see what the atmosphere is like, right? And they tell him, be careful when you go, make sure nobody sees you and recognizes you because they may stone you. <laughs> and then they're gonna make you go back to their religion because that's why they were there, right? Yeah. So when he starts to walk out, he doesn't recognize any of the pathways anymore. Oh. And so he's walking and he's like, I don't recognize any of this stuff. So then he decides to use the coin. He says, let me get out of here. He decides to go use the coin. When he uses the coin, or when he tries to use the coin, the person that he gives it to is like, I don't recognize this. Where did you actually get this from? Uh, <laughs> so then that currency, the coin, <laughs> they start to pass it around in the town. <laughs> And two people became real suspicious of this guy who had bought the coin. Mm. So they took him to the governor. And they accused him of all sorts of things, mainly blasphemy. So, anyway, he's there. And he says, no, you know, me and my companions, we went in the hideout. When we went into hideout, this king was in charge at the time. <laughs> And so they start to look back as far as how many generations ago that was. And then they told him, you're lying. That cannot be. 309 years. So then he said, let me take you back to my companions, right? To the cave where everybody... Astaghfirullah. <laughs> <laughs> Allah is all capable, you know. This is what Allah is telling us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, they were shown, those people were shown those boys in the cave. Do you know what happened to them after they found the boys? But guess what happens to the boys after they found the boys? They died. Yes. Wow, how did you do that? 
don't know. That's wow. Yeah, that's what that's. They all suddenly, they all just die. Oh. So Allah wanted to show the human being how long he can preserve something, anything he wants. And he makes them an example so that even the young ones who have pure commitment and dedication to doing in service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, yes, you can do it. I asked one kid, what you going to be when you grow up? This kid, this is a teenager. I'm going to leave it at that so you know that this kid is over. So. This kid is not sure if he wants to be a doctor or a... The other choice he was telling me was a business owner or a politician. And he's not sure how long any of these would take him. I said, how about the food for thought? If I told you that you can become an engineer, how many years would that be from now? For him, that's at least another 15 years from now. For people younger than him, let's say people who are adolescents, people, you know, who are, well, of the age between 10 and 12, right? They want to become doctor engineer. Do you know that there are some geniuses that may make it by the age of 20? But as a Quran practitioner, all of that is simplified in the matter of two to four years. Food for thought. And if Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says that the best among you is he who learns the Qur'an and teaches it, then why, and you're Muslim, right? Why would you not vest, invest in what he said, in what he did? Why would you not do that? Because you're stubborn, right? Yeah, you're stubborn. Yeah. Yeah, people are stubborn. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove it from... You know, our hearts, inshallah, and give us the best of this Quran, its application, inshallah, this life as well as in the hereafter, inshallah. Okay. Let me get started.